children, God of light and truth, as your blessing rests upon us, may our eyes be open to your word that lives in us, written on our hearts. May our eyes be open to your light and truth that guides us in every part of our daily walk with you. May our eyes be open to your light and truth that leads us to walk in ways we do not yet know. May your light and truth enable us to see your unpredictable spirit walking alongside us every step of the way, giving us courage to venture into unknown territory with you. May we seek to discern your purpose for our lives and offer ourselves willingly in service. May we harness the gifts we have been given and know the power of your spirit. We, may we nurture one another in faith, learn from one another, and work together with you. Creator, Redeemer, Spirit. Amen. Last week, we were holding a meeting in the conference room, and I happened to look across the room and see a poinsettia plant on the table in the corner. I marveled at the fact that it looked so healthy so many weeks after Christmas. It still had all of its leaves and was standing tall. And then, of course, I realized it was an artificial plant. <laughs> so much for being a gardener. <laughs> Of course, real plants need nurture. Plants depend on their roots, and as long as the roots are watered and the soil is fertile, plants will grow. Many of you know that I enjoy getting my hands in the soil, planting seeds, working with cuttings, even weeding. I often feel at peace when I'm working in my garden, because for me, it is a form of prayer. And as I work with the soil or water my plants, God provides nourishment for my heart and soul. Sometimes my yard looks well-groomed and cared for, and then other times when life gets on top of me, my yard looks to look more like the secret garden, in dire need of some attention. The human soul at times must long for life in the garden, as God once envisioned it, eastward in Eden, where according to scriptures, life began. It must have been a place of incredible beauty and harmony and vibrant color. There's no place like a garden to feel at home with God. The psalmist's garden seems fairly simplistic. There were the righteous and the unrighteous. And the psalmist would have us believe there are two kinds of people. Some are like trees, deeply rooted, and others like chaff are blown about by the breeze. But Jesus saw all kinds of people in the Garden of Life. Jesus invited all whom he met into devotional solitude to discover that he was of God. And to this day, he extends that same invitation to you and me. We are invited to find moments of solitude and stillness every day. And in those moments of devotional silence, we are invited to experience God's peaceful countenance, God's positive encouragement, God's unconditional love, and God's gentle spirit. Jeremiah tells us that those who trust in God are like trees growing near a stream that sends roots to the water. The prophet Jeremiah preached to Israel around 600 B.C., and it was during some of the nation's most critical times, such as the destruction of Jerusalem, Judah, the temple, and the period of exile. There were many political upheavals in the Near East, and nations were in conflict with one another. There were many fierce battles. Many great cities fell. Josiah, during a period of reform, tried to restore the faith, removing many of the cults and practices that had dominated society, but many still believed in other gods. Jeremiah warned his people against abandoning their faith. The people of Israel were dependent on deals and alliances for survival. 
But these connections and contacts gave them a false sense of security. One could say that their dealings had become their god. All of their energy was directed at preserving deals that were built on fear rather than faith. These were man-made agreements in which people put their trust. And Jeremiah was warning people that the deals and schemes that they thought would give them life would only be for the short term. So Jeremiah is saying, we need to be like those trees that have a constant supply of water, because they can withstand whatever nature throws at them. Those who trust in the Lord are blessed, because their roots are tapped into the stream of life. In other words, God can sustain us through anything. We are blessed because we have confidence in God's prevailing presence, and it is in that presence that we put our trust. That's not to say that we won't experience pain and loss and hardship, but to have roots is to live our faith no matter what life brings us. We keep our roots by being in conversation with God each day. If you were to look out on the desert from a bird's eye view, you would be able to see where there's water by looking for the trees. You would see clusters of green and an oasis or clumps of green following the course of a river. The psalmist speaks of the oasis. Happy are those who delight in the law of the Lord. They are like trees planted by streams of water. And the word law refers to the Torah. To study the Torah, to study the teaching of God, to take God's instruction. If we are rooted in God's word and our hearts are drawing sustenance from God, we will flourish. <clears throat> Happiness comes from knowing that our lives belong to God and our futures are secured by God. To be blessed or happy means to be living and rooted in the living streams of God, to be connected to the divine source of life. Remember that Jesus taught the same message when he said, I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will bear much fruit, for apart from me, you can do nothing. We must be a part of the vine for us to experience what the vine produces. The fruit that comes from being attached to the vine might be a spirit that becomes more beautiful with age and experience, or wisdom that becomes more gentle, a heart and mind that see the best in people. If we carry ourselves every day with grateful hearts, we will receive countless forms and symbols that contain and express the love that surrounds us. There are times when we become so self-absorbed with our own personal stuff that we can scarcely see anything else. Don't be hard on yourself in a moment of crisis if you question your spiritual strength. Even Jesus cried out in despair from the cross. Life is glorious and wondrous, and life is difficult. But God is real, and love endures. Love surrounds us. Beauty is everywhere. Angels in the flesh surround us. God reaches out to us in every form and symbol we are capable of receiving. Miracles take place in front of us each time bulbs send up their green shoots or we see a baby smile. Jeremiah, Jesus, and the psalmist all understood that God created us in a very special way. And when we live contrary to the way we were designed, we fall apart. But when we cultivate and grow within God's design for our lives, like other life forms on earth, our roots grow deep and we thrive. The issue is not about how God relates to us, but whether we can receive what God sends us every minute of every hour of every day. And the challenge we face is to make choices that will contribute to our being nourished by God. In a society that promotes self-sufficiency, greed, and narcissism, how do we take hold of something that is totally different? How do we plant our roots in an ancient stream of wisdom and life that is profoundly different from the stream in which our society seems to be planted? 
How can we be sure that our roots are planted in the living waters of God? The world around us is filled with people who need the rootedness that comes from faith. But many have never heard a compelling message about how faith makes a difference in their lives. How will you assure yourselves that you are rooted and grounded in faith enough to pass on that wondrous message to those who need it so desperately? Jesus set before us some of the many ways we were called to service by using the gifts that God gives us. We are called to be people of strength and courage, people of compassion and mercy, and people committed to serving God by serving others. It is through the gift of prayer that we are kept close to the heart of God. It is through the gift of prayer that we are kept connected to the vine and connected to one another as the people of God. It is through our receptivity to God's grace that we participate in the mystery of Christ's body. As we journey together as a community of faith, encountering Christ and being instructed by God's invitation, growing together and deepening our common life and ministry, we become filled with gratitude for the mercy of God and for the affirmation of God's unconditional love for us. Connected with one another, the energy of the mind flows through us. We are nourished as we nourish each other. Love is communicated through many different forms of expression. And in the many ways that Pastor Jim and I see, to, see you reaching out to those in your midst, we are inspired by the many ways that you make love visible. For this church, this congregation, is a garden oasis in the midst of a troubled world. When God looks on a church, God can still see reflections of a garden once planted eastward in the Eden. We were designed by God to grow. When we honor God's design for our lives, staying connected to the vine, we will always bloom. Amen.